Today we're looking at the book of Daniel, chapter 6. King Darius the Mede divided the kingdom of Babylon into 120 different provinces. He appointed a high officer to rule each province. Officer, you, high up there on the stilts. Yes, king? You rule. Hey, thanks. No, no, you rule this province. Tell the other high officers to come so I can assign them provinces as well. Soon. Really? Uh, what's a province? I think it's a kind of cheese. No, that's provolone. A province is a certain part of the kingdom. Who cares what it is? We rule. We rule. We rule. We rule. The king also chose Daniel and two other administrators to supervise the high officers and protect the king's interests. We rule. We rule. We rule. Actually, I'm going to have these guys rule over you guys. Well, that was a short rule. I mean, we still rule. They just rule over us now. I've never been so high up and felt so low at the same time. Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all of the other administrators and high officers. Wow, Daniel, you're so awesome at supervising. Wait, you can juggle one-handed too? What? Seriously? And you can do shadow puppets at the same time? Oh, that does it, you guys. I'm putting Daniel over the entire empire. He is now in charge of everybody other than me. What? Seriously? The other administrators and high officers were not happy with this and immediately tried to find a way to get Daniel removed. I can't find fault in Daniel or the way he's running things. He's too good to criticize. He's always responsible. Yeah, and he's too trustworthy, not to mention faithful. Faithful, that's it. We can get Daniel in trouble if we make his religious rules against the king's rules. <laughs> so they went to see King Darius. Long live King Darius. We are all in agreement, all of us administrators and officials and high officers and hello officers. Hello! Not now, Greto. Okay, goodbye! We think that you should make a law for the next 30 days that no one should pray to anyone or anything other than you. If they do, they will be thrown into the den of lions. <gasps> we all agree on this, King. You should be above all. Hmm. My lord, you should issue this law and sign this to make it a super duper law. A uh, super duper law? Yes, King. It means it can't be changed. An official super duper law of the Medes and the Persians cannot be undone. So King Darius signed the super duper law, which meant it was now illegal to pray to God. Daniel heard about the new law, but he continued to pray to God three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to God. My God, would you please give me wisdom and help me? The officials went together to Daniel's house and they saw him praying. Oh, oh we got him now. Let's go tell the king. <laughs> so they went to the king to remind him about the law that had passed. Oh, right, the super duper law that can't be undone. Yeah, I remember that. Why? That man, Daniel, is ignoring you and your law. He still prays three times a day. He must be thrown into the lion's den, King. The super-duper law demands it. This troubled the king, and he tried desperately all day to figure out a way to save his friend Daniel. And that night, the officials returned. There's no way around the super-duper law, King. Give the order to arrest Daniel and throw him to the lions. I have no choice. Bring him in. Soon. I'm sorry, my friend. May your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. So Daniel was placed in the lion's den, and a stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. It was sealed so that no one could rescue Daniel. That night, the king couldn't sleep, and he spent the entire evening refusing to eat fasting in concern for his friend Daniel. The next morning, he rushed out to the lion's den and called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you serve so faithfully able to rescue you from the lions? Long live the king! My God sent his angel to shut the mouths of the lions so they would not hurt me. I've been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. 
awesome. This is such great news. On the bright side, I've also learned that lions enjoy shadow puppets, but they do seem very hungry, so maybe you could let me out and we could feed them? Of course. Men, get Daniel out of there. The king gave orders to arrest the men who had plotted against Daniel. He had them and their families thrown into the lion's den, and the lions gobbled them up before they even hit the floor. However, that is super duper violent and unpleasant to see, so instead we're going to show you this picture of a baby seal. Then King Darius sent this message to the people of the world in every language. May you have great success. I order people in every part of my kingdom to respect and honor Daniel's God. He is the living God. He will live forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His rule will never end. He does miraculous signs and wonders. He does them in the heavens and on the earth. He has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. Daniel's faithfulness to God had yet again been rewarded, and God had yet again been given all the glory and praise. Daniel continued to be blessed by God with great wisdom and success during the rule of Darius and even the next king, Cyrus. The End